As part of avatar dynamics, contacts provide a way to allow avatars to detect collisions with itself or other avatars. These collisions can be used to drive the avatar's animation controllers to perform all sorts of effects. In this tutorial, I'll show you how contacts work, and I'll also show you how to use them to make a cool high five particle effect. There are two kinds of contact components, contact senders and contact receivers. A contact receiver defines an area that will detect collision with a contact sender. It will then set an animator parameter in a certain way as defined on the avatar. Every avatar has built-in contact senders for parts such as hands, fingers, head, feet, and torso. These can be used to interact with compatible contact receivers. Let's do a quick breakdown of the contact receiver component. Under the shape section, you can change settings that define the shape of the contact receiver. Under shape type, you can choose between a sphere or capsule shape for the receiver. Radius changes the size of the collider extending from its origin. If capsule is chosen, height will adjust the height of the capsule from its chosen axis. Position and rotation affect the collider's offset from the root transform. Filtering contains settings allowing you to adjust how this receiver will interact with contact senders. Allow self toggles whether this contact can be affected by yourself. Allow others toggles whether this contact can be affected by other users. Local only will limit the contact to only work on your local client. This means the animator parameter will only change its value for you and not for anyone else. Collision tags are a list of strings that specify what the receiver can be affected by. For a successful collision to occur, both the sender and receiver need at least one matching pair of tags. The receiver section contains settings defining what this receiver will do when compatible contact senders interact with it. In the parameter field is where we can define the name for the parameter affected by this contact receiver. This parameter does not need to be defined on your avatar expression parameters, just in your animator layers. The parameter can be a float, bool, or int depending on the receiver type used. Receiver type defines the behavior of the parameter when a contact sender is detected. There are three receiver types. Constant is updated when any contacts are present in the collision area of the receiver and gets reset when no contact is detected. This will set the animator parameter to 1 for a float or an int, and to true for a bool. A bool is what you would typically want to use since it's the easiest to work with. On enter is updated the frame a contact is detected, and then resets immediately on the next frame. Like with constant, this will set the animator parameter to 1 for a float or an int, and to true for a bool. In this case, a bool is also what you would want to typically use. Optionally, you can set a minimum velocity, which will set the minimum velocity needed from an incoming contact sender to affect this receiver. Proximity updates a float value of 0 to 1 depending on how close a contact is to the collider's center. This is calculated as the closest point of the sender onto the receiver. This receiver type must use a float. Moving on to contact senders, these define an area that will detect collision with a compatible contact receiver. Every avatar has automatically generated contact senders built in, including head, torso, hands, and fingers. With the contact sender component, you can have a contact sender on anything. Under filtering, you can define a list of collision tags. Like with contact receivers, collision tags are a list of strings that specify what the sender can affect. For a successful collision to occur, both the sender and receiver need at least one matching pair of strings. For example, the custom tags here will cause the sender to send a contact signal when they collide with the default head collider or any custom contact receiver with the tag weapon. Now that you know about contact senders and receivers, let's make a clap particle effect using contact receivers. I'll have a download link for this clap particle prefab in the description. Open up your avatar's armature, and find the hand you want this contact on. 
right click the wrist object and create an empty game object. On this empty game object, add a VRC contact receiver component. Adjust the shape of the receiver as you see fit. Under collision tags, click add and select the tag hand. Set the receiver type to on enter and name the parameter clap. Optionally, set a minimum velocity so that it takes a certain amount of force for the clap animation to play. You may also want to disable allow self so you don't accidentally trigger it on your own. Next, drag the star particle prefab onto the root of the hand and move it to where you'd like. Then, duplicate your avatar. On the duplicate, create a new animation for playing the clap particle. Press the red record button, and under the prefab, enable the main particle object and the clap sound object. Then, create another animation with both objects disabled. In your FX controller, add the parameter you defined in your contact receiver. It can be any type besides trigger, but typically, you'll want to make it a bool. Create a new layer and set its weight to 1. In this layer, drag in the disabled animation, then the enabled animation. Create a transition from the off state to the on state with the condition clap equals true, with exit time disabled and transition duration set to 0. Then create a transition back to the off state with the condition clap equals false, but set exit time to something like 0.5. This way, it gives the animation time to play out before disabling the particle and sound objects. And that's all you need to do. No need to mess with expression parameters or expression menu objects. Go ahead and upload your avatar and enjoy a cool particle effect upon giving your friends high fives.